the Lowndes County Board of Elections uh, to order today, February the 12th at 4.30. Uh, we'll do, go down the agenda. I'll do the invocation. Uh, Mr. Duthie will do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, and y'all will just stand, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for uh, this office and, and what this office does for the citizens of Lambs County. Please be with everyone here and their travels to and from. Please be with the men and women who serve this country to give us the freedoms to vote. Please be with their families as they go through the process of, of keeping this country safe. In your heavenly name, please stay with us as, as we travel to and from. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will uh, move down the agenda. Next up will be the minutes for the approval. Uh, I've read over the minutes, and uh, Mr. Goosby, have you been able to yeah. see yours? Anything that's uh, needs correcting or any changes in the minutes? No, I find it very well written and everything. Okay. I move we accept the minutes. I'll second. All in favor for acceptance of the minutes? Raise your right hand. Okay, they're approved. Citizens to be heard. I see we do have some citizens here this afternoon. It's nice and, to have people uh, visiting for you. Yeah. We, uh, yeah, this is, this is good. This is good. Thank y'all for being here. Okay. So, uh, any of y'all have any anything to uh, ask or discuss or anything like that? And if you do, we'll ask you to please uh, rise, give your name and uh, question or whatever we might be able to discuss or something. Well, my name is uh, Alvin Payton, and uh, Ms. Cox already shared some of the information I was coming to hear, and that was the turnout that we've had in Lowndes County for the seat of 177, I think it was, or 176. And so she shared that information, and, and always, I know from experience, it's, it's difficult to get people to come out for special elections. And when I hear that it's 11, over 11,000 people were registered just in Lowndes County to participate, and we have less than a thousand folks. That's going to be less than ten percent. So, uh, but I, that's why I was coming, and she, she's already provided me that information. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Nice, nice to see you. Take care. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am Reverend Belinda Love. I am an associate at <coughs> St. Paul Amy Church on Ashley Street in Valdosta. I don't really have a major concern. I'm here at the request of the chair of the Lowndes County Democratic Party, Mr. Jerome Anderson. But I do want to say, I was at, I believe, your last meeting, and uh, we had a, a discussion about the polling place in Clyadeville, and that's what I had come to that meeting for, only to find out that it had already been resolved. So thank you. I'm new here, and, and thank you for allowing me to come in. And uh, I will go back and, and back and reference to Clyteville. I had a person the other day uh, thought that it was closed down in Clyteville, and I did inform him know that he could still vote in Clyteville. Yes. So uh, he was happy. It's so, about uh, five minutes from where I'm staying. So that's, that's <laughs> nice. Okay. All right. On Madison Highway. Okay. okay. Anything else? Any? No. Anything? Okay. You're just happy to be here. Well, that was voluntary to be here. <laughs> 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 that was well, I understand you've been That's around. That's just happy to be here. Your going around. I understand you've been in Tampa, is that it? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Excuse <laughs> me. Wow, you do. <laughs> Mr. Goolsby, how are you doing today? Yes, my name is Constantine James. I'm just like Dr. Love. Excuse me, Reverend Love. Reverend Dr. Love, excuse me. Um, I was voluntold to be here as part of the Democratic Party also. But uh, I work with a company called the National, we do the national testing in America. It's called NAEP or Westat. And I go to different schools and administer a test. And Dr. Payton, he was asking me what we do. And I just came back from Tampa. 
I just came back from Waycross, mm -hmm. came home, took a shower just so I could make this meeting, yes. and here I am. I might <laughs> add, she took a good paying job with a band and all. She was just <laughs> left us. That's what I was about, about to say. Oh. She was once here <laughs> with, with us. us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was. Sorry about that. I understand why anybody would have <laughs> Right. Yes. All right, well, thank you all for being here, and uh, we'll move now to the next uh, item on the agenda, uh, supervisor's report, and we're glad to have Ms. Carla did make it. So yeah, she made it from the school. <laughs> that's, that's always touch and go with students and parents. <laughs> All right. Ms. Cox, what was your order? Uh, nothing unusual in the budget, just election after election after election. Um, we're running close to exhausting our budget, but we've had numerous elections that were not budgeted for, and that's not an issue with the county. Um, we try to keep it as tight as possible, so we're okay there. Um, let's see what else I have. We've had 306 voters in the polling places today. We had 306 voters voting early, and we have four mail ballots to count at 6 o'clock tonight. So four, not 44. Um, regional meeting is going to be held here uh, for counties in our region. Uh, it's going to be 24 April. Chris Harvey, Director of Elections, is coming down, and he's bringing our new liaison, another new liaison. And we'll be discussing legislation, new equipment, and all those sorts of things. We're going to meet out at Mama June's uh, at 11 and go on until we're done. If y'all want to. 11 a.m. Huh? 24 April. So we'll have counties from all over coming in to get the right, new info. The, the meeting will take place here. Or they, no, or we'll going to meet there? out there yeah, right. where they can eat and listen and talk mm -hmm. and talk with their mouth full and all that. Is that it's, open to the public? No, there are security issues that are discussed and things like that. We can give you any information you want afterwards that's not about security and those sorts of things. But it's largely a training thing. More than anything else is training for areas, elections office. We have a lot of new people. And that's all I have. That's all I have. Very slow day today. Back. Very, very slow day. All right. Yeah. Anybody, anybody have any questions for Ms. Dill? Mm, just thank you for the slow pace. I might add the runoff is uh, March 12th. The election for the East Blossom is March 19th. Yeah. So if there is a runoff, it will be March 12th. Right. We're you said March 19th was what? East Blost and Valdosta School Board District 2. Okay. So we have three elections in a very short order. Mm -hmm. Projects Blost, the county is discussing putting that on the November election this November. We're already starting planning for 2020 right. at state. So that's it. All the news. Well, when I came in, the phones weren't ringing, so I thought maybe somebody had unplugged the phone. But I didn't realize nobody was calling the office over here. That was a nice feeling. All right. Anybody else? Yeah. Thank you. 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 I don't want to call it anything. Okay. Call. No, not for me. Nothing for you? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Move down to uh, new business. Anything new? Can't get poll workers. That's old business, though. That's, that's continual business. That's going to be an ongoing thing. Right. I, I yeah. think that is going to be a Help and, and really help us. That's where they aspect of yeah. children. You need poll workers? Always. 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 Yeah. Where do you think the problem of getting poll workers is? Jobs are so plentiful out there that even Walmart's offering tuition reimbursement for college students to come work there. Okay. And well as McDonald's. Right. Everybody is. I mean, right. anybody that wants a job can go out and get one you know, in two or three minutes. We used to have a lot of seniors as well. Right, right, right. And now seniors are no longer stay at home. They're so busy they need social secretaries, so they don't have time for this either. Okay. Um, people that are working don't want to take time off, even though, you know, they can take leave or something. It still impacts your work performance. 
and it's just a general culture of less volunteerism. Uh, plus the increased requirements and responsibility on poll workers. They have to train, uh, pass tests, they have to demonstrate they can do the job, mm -hmm. and they're held accountable mm -hmm. for any errors. Um, and it's usually a 12-hour day? Well, no, it's a, for a manager or assistant, mm -hmm. it's about seven hours of training okay. prior to, plus online three to four hours and a okay. test. Uh, plus election day, they have to be there before 6 a.m. and they stay there until it's over, which is generally 9, 10 p.m. Okay. And if there's any errors, they have to come in the next day. So if you weren't, that's kind of not easy to do. Right. Um, plus, people don't really want to take responsibility for errors of people working under them, which is a necessity. So it's kind of a scary prospect. It has changed a lot since I was in public. Dramatically. Dramatically. Yeah. But we have, let me say something, we have for the Democrat, excuse me, we have for the Democratic Party, and I do notice that um, the chairman, which was, uh, our former chairman, which was Mr. J.D. Rice, yeah. and now our present chairman, they have been asking, pushing military, um, because military is, you know, well-groomed, um, most mm -hmm. of them are retired military, and they were trying to push that last year for the workers to come. But um, some objections that we did have in the audience were teachers would love to participate, but when it comes to the, I think she said the staying all day on the actual poll, that's where the deterrent starts. When you're at one that, not the uh, early voting, sure, you can get a lot of people to come and do, to work for early voting, but it's that one day when you have to vote at your precinct and you have to stay all day. That's so I, I made sure by a former worker, uh, working as an assistant manager and a manager, I still mm -hmm. know my job. Um, mm -hmm. And I tried to explain that before you do take the job, you have to make sure that on, the, on their actual day that they go to their precinct, you have to stay there. You cannot take a break. Mm -hmm. I, mean, like, I mean, what I mean by that, you can break, but you cannot actually leave. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. then the polls close at seven. Sometimes you may not get out of there at 7 o'clock. You know, you have to clean up your area. One for all, all for one. That's the way I see it. Uh, no, exactly. The, on election day itself is a, is a big challenge. And, uh, sacrifice. But you if you have, have the right there. people in there, I, you come to my area, Mr. Corbett. You already know, like, when it's ran right and when they, excuse me once again, when they do their job, when they're taking the test, when you're taking the test, all of that is easy uh, on the computer. That's not the problem. They can go through that. Mm -hmm. A lot of them want the early voting. Still not a problem. Mm -hmm. Doing early voting, sometimes you can't even get people to come in and do the early voting. And sometimes you're just sitting there bored. Yeah. You know, just like I heard on the radio today, um, uh, all this week they were begging people. The number that Deb coded 306, that's embarrassing. It is. That is embarrassing. It really is. And a lot of people don't know what we run into is a lot of people we used to have in the telephone books where they tell you where your districts are located. The districts are kind of messed up. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, I don't care how you constantly tell them, they can always come here. They can also stop by there, the Republican Party. They can stop by the Democratic Party. But they can also come here and get information. And they can find out by typing in their information on the voter's registration to find out what precinct that they're in what is their voting district? And a lot of people, like I said, it used to be in the telephone book, but you know, through changes, you, you don't do any of that anymore. But a lot of them, when they get to the precinct, it's not the problem. I think the problem is, I've, I've heard some of them, oh, why we can't leave, or why we can't take a break. I mean, sometimes you just can't leave because it gets busy. You know how North Side is. North Side, um, the one that's by the mall. Uh, Rainbow. Mildred Hunter. Rainbow. Those are the three that I, uh, uh, Bemis Road. Mm -hmm. Those are, I mean, you sometimes you just can't take a break, like <laughs> physically go outside. Yeah. You can break, but then also, too, when you finish your area, you might just be working the tables where you're signing people in. Mm -hmm. But you got, I mean, like everybody, you have to stay there and help out so everybody can do, everybody has their own section. Everybody who's responsible for their machines. And I think like that's kind of deterring because you have people who work and when the clock strikes seven o'clock, they don't understand that <laughs> you have to physically be there. And I think that's where a lot of it is coming in now. Actually on election day. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, it's such a loss of civic duty. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and that's a cultural shift. That's right. not necessarily exactly. a, a shift where I, I think when civics, the lack thereof in K through 12, <laughs> has a, a big impact of what's happening now. Mm -hmm. um, and not understanding that the day of the election mm -hmm. is what it is. It, it is what it, it is. is what it, that has been consistent, the mm -hmm. day of election. So uh, for me to hear people say they don't know means that there's a lack of education, not holistically, I'll say that way, where we will not lay blame on anyone, but there's a lack of education holistically that's mm -hmm. going out through our community. So. And it's not just our community. I'll say it that way. It's, it's, exciting. it's exciting on election day. It's very exciting on election, election day. Days. Like, especially for me when I was working on election day. I mean, because like I said, when you don't have anybody coming in, I mean, you're sitting there. I mean, Deb tells them that sometimes, you know, the managers should tell the managers they can bring like the crossword puzzles or whatever. Okay, all that is fine. But like, it's nothing like people coming through the door constantly when you're busy. Hello, how you doing? Thank you for thank you for voting. Or welcome to voting. I mean, it just makes me feel so good when I was the manager, when I was assistant manager, just welcoming people in, coming in to vote, just staying busy, staying busy makes the time go by before you know it. It's six fifty nine, and as a manager, I'm standing at the door. Because when 7 o'clock hit, I'm, come, I'm standing behind the, the last person. You understand know what I'm saying? Because I know I'm getting ready to shut the doors. Hey, we're getting ready to lock these machines down. We're getting ready to count so we can see if there's, a, if there's an election. I should have said something about the runoffs. <laughs> like we have a runoff, but that's one of the meetings. Well, another shift is in early voting. In a small election, we get 50% early voting and 50% in the polling places. In big elections, we're up to 65% in here. So there's actually a lot less people going to the polling places and waiting until the last day. Uh, the new terminology is the last day to vote, not necessarily election day, because it really isn't an election day anymore. So we're seeing a massive shift there, too, which is going to make a difference in the number of poll workers we need. So that helps a little bit. I think that early voting has got a lot to do with a lot of it. Really. Yeah. Everybody loves that early voting. Yeah. I've talked to people over and over again, and they really love that early voting. They'd rather come up here in early voting, and they don't have the hassle of getting in and out places or going places. There you go. They really like it. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you very much for y'all for coming. Yes, Thank you both for y'all. We're glad y'all came, too. <laughs> I was yeah. going to say, perhaps, uh, if I may, at the end of the night, that's probably when you get an influx of people trying to make it in before you close. Does that happen? It depends sometimes. Yeah, because you could be busy doing something, look at your watch, oh my God, I've got a boat, and go running over there and... You know, as long as they're in line. As long as they're in line. <laughs> In line when the clock strikes oh, wow. seven, the manager will stand behind the last person. Mm -hmm. But like Mr. Corbett said, excuse me, um, early voting is just what it is. A lot of people try to come in early voting. I think, uh, I don't know if it was said, but I also think it depends on the actual who's running. Yeah. Like this election yeah. right here, a lot of people are not really like, you know, 176, what's that? I mean, like a lot of people are probably asking themselves, what is that? Like, I don't, I, mean, I, thought, I thought that was, we did that last year. No, but they don't understand, but like we have a lot of things going on this year where we have uh, the mayor, the sheriff, I think, a couple of the districts. That's a big election, so you're going to have a lot of people that's going to be trying to come in and early vote. But this right here, I don't think it was enough advertisement. I don't think a lot of people probably even like really realize that, hey, we got people who are running for 176, District 176. We have people who are running for District 175. They just don't know. Mm -hmm. what their district is and if they don't know once again www dot <laughs> seriously or if they can come up here or just well, look I, at the precinct card exactly I, I have to stand and say this um, some people may be coming because they're being paid but I think you have to be, reinforce the fact that it's not just the pay. You're talking about poll workers, now, yes. not voters. Yes, poll okay. workers. Yes. I feel better now. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, I if you to vote, everybody would come back. <laughs> but uh, for the polls, I'm saying, you know, it is a paid position, and mm -hmm. people look at that as extra money. But I think somehow you need to just reinforce to them this is really about civics. You know, the civic duty to your community, to the residents and to what we're voting for. Mm -hmm. Just keep reinforcing that in some way before they're even hired. They should know you're, you're, you're committed to a certain amount of time. 
to be here. And if you can't commit to that, perhaps you shouldn't, you know, apply. That's where we are. That's where we are. That's where we are. Yeah. 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 Adjourn. Motion by uh, Ms. Carla to adjourn. Second. Mr. Guzman. All in favor? Aye. 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 We stand adjourned.